Okay, this is Reed Gray, the old Robo Hippie, back at you again. Uh, this is more on the safety video type things. And um, a quote I'm going to use time and time again, get a lot of mileage out of it, um, from Pat's fan on the WoodNet forums. When sphincter tightening exceeds chuck tightening, you've got a problem. And this is one of those things that every time I even just think about it, it kind of makes me go... <sighs> But um, this involves where to put your hands when you're turning and sanding. Um, you want to avoid injury, and so we'll touch on a couple of items here. Just about every single bull turner that you see while they're turning, especially when they're doing the inside of the bull, they're going to feel with their hands to feel if there are any bumps and lumps and stuff because you can't see as well as you can when you're on the outside and you have to be very very careful where you're placing your hands in there because if you don't you can get pinched between the tool rest and the wood. If you're going to feel the inside of your bowl to feel for bumps and ridges while it's turning you do not want your hand anywhere near the tool rest because it doesn't take much for your hand to get kind of pushed by the wood down in between there and it gets pinched and that is a battle that the wood and the lathe are going to win every single time. If you want to feel while the wood is still spinning feel up here where you're very far away from the tool rest, or better yet, feel down here for those little bumps and humps. That'll keep your hand out of harm's way, or you can just turn it off and then feel, do the same thing. Now, this is for sanding. Now, if you've ever done any hand sanding, which just about all of us have at one time or another, you're all familiar with this little move right here. The paper goes flying off. So the next time you try it, you're holding it twice as hard and it'll grab and it'll pull your hand down. Okay. If you have a tool rest in here while you're trying to sand, just like if you're sticking your hand in here while it's spinning to feel it, you run a huge risk of getting your fingers pinched in there. So, this is your finger. Finger with a little sandpaper around it. Need I say more? <laughs> Keep the tool rest far away from the work if you're sanding. Always, you just don't want to get pinched. Okay, so same scenario if you're turning spindles, and I know it's a temptation to keep your tool rest there if you're doing production work and you want to sand it and then get the next one on there. Get your tool rest out of the way. Again, if you're going to have your tool rest there, if you have it out here, if your hand goes down there, not a problem. If it's up here like this, sandpaper your finger or your hand. I had to do that one twice before I finally figured out how to keep my hand out of the way and fortunately it was just minimal but yeah be safe. Now since I'm talking about sanding in this clip and keeping tool rests out of the way as a production worker I turn a lot then sand a lot and my sanding process has been refined to the point to where I'm sitting in a chair when I do it and holding this thing out, my angle drill, which power sanding is definitely the most efficient, that gets tiring after a long day. Sitting in the chair takes some of the load off the feet. And then the other problem is holding this thing out here like this. So what I came up with, and this is very crude, this is one of the one-way inside bowl rests. First attempts, I just wrapped a couple of t-shirts around it and that made a nice pad, but it didn't reach as far. And I have one of the articulated hollowing systems and I kind of like, oh, put this together. So what it does for me, there we go. So what it does for me, I can hold my angle drill here, sand the inside, and then when I want to sand the outside, my other little arm over here comes to the outside and I can hold the drill under here. So mostly just take some of the wear and tear off your body. Um, this definitely is not a high-tech machine. It works. Uh, somebody can make something that's a lot prettier and probably a lot more efficient, but just you know, take some of that extra wear off. One side point on this, this is not in any way, shape, or form a tool rest. If you even have the remotest dream about using this for a tool rest, it better be a nightmare. It's going to be bouncing up and down like a drop of water on a hot cast iron skillet. You will hurt yourself. You will break things. But um, 
it works. So we have a couple layers of foam here. There is a through bolt here, so this is like my articulated arm on my hollowing system. I've got a little piece of plastic there. Just keep this snug, snug enough so that this rotates. And it is pretty much just like those articulated hollowing systems. Not pretty, but it works.